right, I'm now going down another country lane to a place called Adepton. I don't know how you pronounce it, but Isaacsons were also found in the census to be living here. Right, Depton. I've had to park my van up and I've got a three quarter of a mile walk. Apparently you can't drive up this because it narrows. Just going past the place where they keep a lot of tractors. The weather doesn't look brilliant, so I hope I don't get soaked before I get there. I did notice something saying, strictly by appointment. I'm about to leave my van and I'm... It's quite windy, it's not raining yet. And I'm walking out in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully it's safe and I'm... going to try and find this church. Maybe it's going to turn out to be a place like Landwade which is a church within um, some rich person's grounds. There's a lake coming up and it looks like there's grounds here, trees and seats within the woods. Um, reminds me a bit of Landway, so maybe this place is a private church, but, you know, sort of public, private. Yes, I'm going on this country path a lake or a pond, very black, and all around me there's like fields, and I'm wandering around, I've just seen an orange arrow, so obviously this has been done before, I'm now going across a wooden bridge, similar to the ones we had in Barrow, not the sort of place you normally walk on your own, but uh, us family tree people with our own passion, we sort of go anywhere. It looks like I might be coming up to something. I can see a signpost. Yeah, I don't know I might have done this. It would have been a nice little walk for Brandy. I've just got to see, follow the sign to the church. Of course, unbeknown to me, not long after this was taken, um, the Suffolk Strangler, the serial killer, was at loose in Suffolk around the Ipswich area, mainly after prostitutes. I mean, they caught him, but he he murdered five or six women that that we know of. So there was me crawling around in the middle of nowhere. But he was um, a lorry or a van driver. Anyway, back to the cassette. It's coming up to a wooden sign now, after walking through a small wood. And the sign says, Path one way. Public footpath. But there's no sign to the church, so I, I assume I carry on. Um, I'm just going to quickly look round this hedge first, just in case I'm going. I don't want to go the wrong way. I think I'll carry on this way actually, because this is sort of going round the village around the outside of a park. What I'll do, I'll go up to the next public footpath sign. This is a real mystery. So I don't want to be carrying on for miles up there where I'm going. The orange arrow disappeared after a while. I can't even see a church, but I could be taking the wrong way. It's part of the adventure. He didn't tell me that there would be a crossroad, did he? But I'm only coming this way because it's sort of surrounding the village, and it could be that it's at the back here somewhere. There's massive big gardens the other side of the hedge there. Three quarters of a mile, he said. I mean, I could be going the complete wrong way, but if I carried on, I 
think I would have gone further out of my way, but who knows? There's no sign to the church. It's a bit of a, one of these Suffolk mysteries. I'm, I'll go online later and see what the... There's a bloke that's done um, a really big study of Suffolk churches. And, uh, I didn't plan on coming to this one. So it'll be interesting. I still can't see no sp spire, no tower. Somebody's whacking great garden there. I'm hoping the church will be up here in a minute. Like I said, I'm right out in the middle of nowhere. There's a, a wood back there. But something told me to follow this way. I don't know if that'd be right. Oh, there's more signs now. You see, there's a maze of footpaths. You could end up going anywhere. Let me just see what this one says. No mention of a church, you see. And that's another sign up here. He should have said to me, bare left. I can't see a church anywhere. I'm wandering about. Not really knowing where the church is. He said three quarters of a mile. See it being a church over there. It's a bit of a mystery, I can't find it. There's no one to ask. I'm gonna follow round this path. There's a path that goes through a dark wood. Um, I'll go and have a look up here. This is taking me on like a circular walk. I come this way. I might be able to see something when I get up here, maybe. I can hear the busy road, so I'm probably going the wrong way. In which case, I'm not going to be walking three quarters of a mile. I'm going to be walking five miles to try and find this church. I'm right in the middle of nowhere, in a wood. Maybe I should have carried on, but there was no sign. And there's nobody to ask. There's a building up here. I'm sure this comes back onto that road. There might be someone in the garden. I could shout out to him. Somebody digging their lawn. And it, this looks a bit too... Remote. Somebody's gone to find out for me because it looks like it's a bit of a wild goose chase. He's just gone to go and ask somebody, they might not know either. Right, I just met a very helpful gentleman who told me that the local farmer has fallen out with the church, so he doesn't allow people to use his fields or driveway for access to Dipton Church. Um, I have got a backtrack a bit. It won't be far, as long as it don't pour with rain. And um, I should have gone straight across at the first crossroad, so it can't be far now. But apparently when they have funerals and everything, they have to carry the coffins, or they, I don't, you know, because it's only a narrow track, um, they have, and it's quite a while away, um, if they've got to do any work in the churchyard or anything, it's all, you know, they're not allowed to touch the fields. Anyway, I'm back out in the open now, I was fortunate seeing somebody, I'm going to go back to the original crossroad now, it makes it more interesting, this particular little field trip, um, because someone was looking to buy a property and he didn't know, the first man I spoke to, he, he didn't know where he was, so he went and found somebody, and uh, it's a little bit of local history for him if he's going to buy this place, so anyway, 
It's taken me longer than I thought. He should have said carry straight on when you get to the thing. Um, I'm going to stop now because I'm nearly out of tape. Right, I've got here. I've not got a lot of tape, so I'm going to do a scan. And I'll only come on tape if I find anybody. There is a fire, a pledger, a Clifford. This place is right in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I would love this one. There's a couple of big vaults here. There's a huge one with a great big tree coming out of it. Another great big upright slab of a Lloyd family, a Mary Ann Lloyd. Just found an Isaacson, a pink marble to the dear memory of a beloved husband and a father, Sidney Fuller Isaacson, who passed onward the 12th of May 1946 with a pink marble surround, an upright pink marble cross under a tree. So there was one here, I found him. This is a really creepy graveyard by the way, it's surrounded by woods, very overgrown. And all sorts of monuments emerging from the undergrowth. That was a relatively new grave, I think, marble one. People called Steel, Reed. There's a green. There's three chalice graves in a row. Louisa Mary Ann Death. Died in 1913, age 85. Barber, a gin gel, an Ashman, a Palmer, a Crick, a Leonard Crick who died in 1927, age 61, and Celia Ann Crick who died in 1934. And you've got um, a Maud Victoria, wife of H.W. Reeve. She was 37 when she died in 1924. This is St. Mary's Church at Depton. Big padlock on it, can't get in. I'll have a look through the window. I'm just going to go back and take... It's very creepy here. There's lots of weird noises. Can't go back now. It's like a horror film, really. That was a very, very creepy graveyard. I don't think I'd want to... I didn't feel comfortable in there. I didn't know. Um, but I didn't realise how, how remote it was. I keep looking back. It's like I'm walking past a wood and now a dark lake. Um, going across a bridge. Yeah, that was very creepy, but I did find an Isaacson. So I've got a name there to work on. a bit now. That was very creepy, that was. You almost feel as if they're going to follow you. Oh, that was scary. Yes, yeah, extremely creepy that was because I was right, very, very isolated. You know, um, I know you, people say you've got to be scared of the living more than the dead, but you felt as if they were watching you. It was it was very overgrown, lots of rusty old railings and big old coffin type tombs. And I'm looking back at the walk. You know, it's a, oh, I'm walking back through a bit of a wood, but there is um, somewhere at the other side. They have got arrows leading there, but when you came to the crossroad, the arrows disappeared. Things like you've got the old fire burning. There's piles of wood where someone's obviously somebody works around there gathering in piles of wood. But you know, it's like you know, it's like like the hills of ice. You know, it was um, feeling like that. And I thought best to go now. You've had a quick look round. The church was shut, and I'm going to go to Tevington now. Well, why 
why did they go down that lane? Why did they isolate themselves? I mean, I was crawling around gravestones under dark trees, under undergrowth. Um, I found myself in that position. It's weird. But that's what you say, you know, why... You know, they always say, let's go down here when you, everybody knows they shouldn't. So that was creepy. That must be the creepiest one I've been to, mainly because it was isolated. Lots of unreadable stones, lots of hidden stones. So I thought there were more Isaacsons in there. Finally, there's one family outstanding this way, and that's the Masons. Right, I've just been talking to a chap who's got a bungalow just by the footpath before you go up to the church. He gave me a little bit of a rundown. I think his family, his mother, who's 90, has lived here for years. And he said the big landowners around here was somebody called Rolf. Um, and, you know, he, he was quite interesting to chat to, really. It's all part of the story to tell my grandchildren one day.